Hi, and welcome to Travels with Phil. I'm Phil Constantine. On this episode, we're in New York State at the home of Martin Van Buren. Martin Van Buren was the eighth president of these United States, and we're going to look at his home in Kinderhook, New York. This is where it is on the map up there. Uh, Van Buren was the only United States president who was not an English speaker as his original language. He grew up speaking Dutch, which was very, very common in this uh, part of New York State. This is what his property uh, looked like, and looks like somewhat uh, right now you can see it overhead a modern day shot from google maps thank you google and this is what it looks like on the ground an interesting kind of guy he helped start the democratic party one of the founders of that particular party in effort to bring back what he felt was should be a two-party state here in the united states so let's take a look around his property welcome my name is ranger andrew and i'm here at linden wall the home of our eighth president martin van buren Hey Martin, we're here for our 9 o'clock appointment. Hey look, it's Martin. My name is Jim McKay. I'm the Chief Ranger here at Martin Van Buren National Historic Site in Kinderhook, New York. And we're here in the main hall of his home where we have a wonderful reproduction of his original dining table which is a pretty unique piece of furniture. All you're doing is holding it in place. Okay. And they recreated the original table that was there. There is so much that goes into a table like this beyond just an apron, four legs, and a top. You've got the, the mechanical part of the table. Everything has to work together so that the table functions as it's supposed to. Some of the uh, chairs around the table are original chairs, um, and some of them are reproduction, and uh, John actually reproduced uh, the reproduction chairs as part of a later project after the table. Great political luminaries like Henry Clay or, or Thomas Hart Benton, all of the um, the leading politicians of, uh, of New York politics during the uh, 1830s, 40s, and 50s were here. They all sat around that table and they, and they, they tried mightily to come to um, a solution which would avoid war. The fearfulness that they had if there was a war. The table helps me to convey that emotion. The table is a, is a wonderful piece of craftsmanship. It's, it's, it's aesthetically beautiful here, um, but also uh, if you're not careful, you might learn something about American history. And Martin Van Buren supposedly bought the property here because it was on the main road from New York to Albany. Well, what did they do around the table? Well, they occasionally drank coffee. So let's take a look at what it takes to make some coffee. This is a, a reproduction of one of the original pieces of equipment that was used there. They don't use the original anymore, but they do use this uh, simulated one. And this is called a uh, balance coffee maker. And what it does is you put the water in the top, you heat it up, it's called an it has an alcohol uh, lamp on the bottom or a fire. So you heat it up, causes the water to expand, then go out into the carafe with the coffee grounds. Eventually it percolates through there. It doesn't percolate, eventually it just heats up with the grounds that are in there. And then when the uh, heat is taken away, it, it creates a suction and sucks it back into the original metal container where the water was held. A lot of effort to make coffee. Of course, that's been going on for a long time. A lot of people made a lot of money making coffee makers. And some of the things you may not have known about uh, Martin Van Buren. Uh, he was governor of New York, was secretary of state. He was vice president of the United States to Andrew Jackson. He was the, uh, the uh, president of the United States uh, when uh, the Indians were kicked out of the southeastern part of the United States. Trail of Tears happened under his administration. He was the first U.S. president who was not born a British subject. And the town he came from is Kinderhook. And they used to call him Old Kinderhook. And they started using the initials OK in uh, his campaign stuff. And that sort of led to the popularization of the phrase OK. So back inside the house looking around, very interesting uh, developed house, interesting designs, a lot of paintings on the walls, and some interesting stuff.
limited budget to do things. This is table. So this is actually a reproduction table, but I actually don't make it better. We have arts and Martin Van Buren's house, Kinderhook, New York. He sort of bridged from the end of the Revolutionary War to the Civil War, his life. And they do limit where you can actually take pictures. So I did use some of theirs and some of mine. That's his a bedroom there. He had a lot of bedrooms here. This is the kitchen. And they had a lot of servants. They had live-in servants. So if those things you see in the English dramas where they're ringing a bell and somebody downstairs sees or hears the bell ringing, they go run to see what they need. This kind of thing was in operation in this house. This was a very large house. They were well-to-do at the time. He uh, married. His wife died of TB fairly young in the relationship, and he never remarried. When he was uh, president of the United States, his uh, daughter-in-law uh, wound up being, if you would like the term, first lady. She was the hostess. There's the uh, bell system, and this is the servants' quarters upstairs. A lot of Irish here. Originally, there was a lot of Dutch in Kinderhook, and uh, the uh, British or the Dutch uh, were very, very popular in this area. That's why his uh, he spoke Dutch as a child. Not popular, common, I should say. Back in the kitchen. That's his picture over the fireplace. The parlor, very nice. A harp. You provided your own entertainment in a lot of these homes. Sort of what they called a sleigh bed. The ends sort of looked like uh, took on the shape of a sleigh. And as you can see, it definitely gets a little bit cold here with the winter time and the snow will come down. There's one of the little things you pull to ring a bell in the servants' quarters. Did have a very nice piano at times. So he did well. Now again, he was on the post road. This is the tower that's up there. They could go up and see if someone was approaching. Some folks said he he was on the post road because that's where most people went by so he could stay in the mix, as it were, even after he was gone. Well, we started off at his house. Well, let's go take a look at where he's buried, just on the other side of town here in Kinderhook. This is actually the Ichabod Crane School that was uh, started. The story came from, about from a meeting from the author in the actual house itself before Van Buren uh, moved in there. And then this is the Reformed Church Cemetery where Martin Van Buren is buried. That's his, the tall one there. That's his uh, marker, or at least for the family. Specifically, that one's for him, but there are, uh, the several members of the families, as you can see here, are all buried together. And there's a couple of other spots here in this little town. I hate to use the word quaint, but that comes to mind. So this is where Martin Van Buren grew up, thanks to the National Park Service for their help. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.